Hello and welcome to Punt Counterpunt, the pretend debate show for real magic cards. Lots of people say, what is old is new again, but we've looked at a ton of old cards and it turns out most of them are only similar to the new ones. It sucks to be gaslit, but it's also good because this show was designed to bring people together for everyone's favorite pastime, watching people argue online. And speaking of everyone, what's more uniting than magic cards that make more than one? Everyone loves them, especially Garrison Cat because it's cute. But some people might say Crawling Chorus was cute too, if they got confused and thought about another card by mistake. Thanks so much, Kathleen. It's a pleasure to argue on behalf of Garrison Cat. Look at this cuddly little floof. Not every magic card can tell a story as succinctly as our little kitty friend here, but... If you trample through the barracks and kill the cat, the garrison's going to come running. And lo and behold, a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. And it's even playable in Aristocrats. Just a great card. Crawling Chorus gives the same overall play pattern. It's a 1-mana 1-1 that when it dies, it makes another 1-mana 1-1. But both the Chorus and the Might that it makes come with Toxic. So we get to attack from a couple of different angles. And... To be clear, I I find Crawling Chorus to be pretty cute. You know, maybe it's not everyone's standard definition of cute, but when I look at it, it's uh, it's that smile, that damn smile, and that other smile, and the other one, and the fourth one. It, well, you get the picture. I'm not sure that everyone's willing to put Crawling Chorus into their deck, and so for those people, Garrison Cat will be ready. Just looking like a normal cat with one face this has one face and another face and another uh and another one. Oh, and would you look at that there's one more there oh and then there's another one in the corner there hey there little fella all right and as far as aristocrats goes in a deck looking to just feed these one mana one ones to the bigger creatures this is <laughs> i guess you could call this the food pyramid hey good joke I think that it's important to look at your cards in the best and worst case scenarios, and frankly, my token can block. If you're playing a deck that relies on cards with multiple bodies, sometimes the early game is a little scary. Your opponent's going to be using their two and three mana plays for big creatures sometimes, and you need to keep chumping those. Garrison Cat has got you covered, Meow. Block? Why would I need to block? I have no intention of blocking. I'm just going to continue attacking until my opponent succumbs to poison. Well, audience, I think we can all agree on two things. Crawling Chorus is freaky, and it's fun to decide that someone you saw on the internet is super wrong. So let's do it again. Staff of Domination does a lot of stuff, but so does Staff of Completion. So which is better value, and which is morally superior? Let's make some judgments. Okay, kids, huddle up around the fire. Uncle Nelly's going to tell you all about the days of Staff of Domination. Eh, not really. This is just something you use to win the game if you have infinite mana. But before you get to that spot, it'll also help you survive by tapping your opponent's creatures, untapping your own creatures, gaining a bit of life, maybe just spending your turn digging for that piece to get the infinite mana. There's a lot of beautiful things happening here. Enjoy. Nelson, even I got to admit that Staff of Domination is a powerful card. I mean, heck, it was even banned in Commander. Of course, that was before I got to join and therefore complete the Commander Advisory Group. But what if we took Staff of Domination and perfected it? Staff of Completion lets you do everything you could want from a card. You can destroy your own permanence. You can pay life. You can even draw cards. And hopefully those cards will let you spread more oil, proliferate more poison counters, maybe infect some unwilling participants. I mean, this card's the whole package. Okay, cogent arguments, Wheeler. But paying five to untap your staff versus paying one to untap my staff, that's four extra mana you have to put in. Plus, I'm gaining life with my staff. All of your abilities cost life. Where are you getting these life points from? Life is but a resource to sacrifice for the greater good, Nelson. Like winning the game. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I got distracted staring at these rings of Brighthearth. If you need me, I'll be digging for my basalt monolith. Wow, those are certainly two powerful artifacts, but neither of them fly, so they're probably not great and limited. But not Baleful Strix or Malkator's Watcher. One of those cards is good. But which one will it be? Get emotionally invested. 
Blessed be are the eyes of Malkader, extending the probing arms of his lord Gix, ensuring the completion of a perfect Phyrexia, and occasionally trading with my opponent's creature, letting me draw a card. What is happening? Is there a bit I wasn't told about? How can you even argue this card against Baleful Strix? Sure, I have to pay a black, but then I get the card immediately. I can flicker the Baleful Strix. I can Resto Angel the Baleful Strix. The Baleful Strix gives me the card first. I can draw into the kill spell to deal with your creature. I'm so sorry, Malkator's Watcher. This fight shouldn't have fallen to your hands. Baleful Strix is so much better. We might as well be talking about Hovermere. Did somebody say Hovermere? Only the single greatest flying artifact creature ever printed? Oh my god. It and Gta best friends! Ah! By Great Oko's glistening abs! Oh my god, Surge, they turned you into a Phyrexian! Ah! Sweet mother of Auron's good eye, what has befallen me? No! Did you guys not tell him we're all Phyrexians now? I mean, I haven't seen Nelly this upset since they accidentally put bacon on his bagel. We, it hasn't come up yet. We've been doing punt counter punt. James said we had to get the video done. Tough but fair, but I'm a busy guy. Yes, I know that we only had you booked till 1.45, but I don't... Can we complete him while he's screaming? Oh, no, you shouldn't do that. Uh, my Viva Surgeon says that you should never interrupt someone when they're screaming. Yeah, I think we gotta wait till he winds down on his own. What? Why did it have to be Surge? What's gonna happen to me now? Wait, are you guys completed too? Ooh, get him! Hey, buddy. Y'all tuckered out? You want some teeth? Ooh, I never say no to teeth. Hey, that wasn't so bad, was it? Except for all the parts that were so bad, right? Well, this was fun, but time to head back to the surgical bay. Ah, uh, oh, this guy. This, this is a guy. Life of the party. <laughs> all right. Bye, Serge. Ciao. All right. And now all of us are completed and we are finally united in glorious purpose. No more distractions from the one true work determining which card is better, Phyrexian Obliterator or Phyrexian Vindicator. At last, my true purpose. As a proud member of the Phyrexians, I can argue for the Obliterator. Truly Shaledred's perfect specimen. 5-5 five, five, Trample. And don't even try blocking it or dealing damage with spells because you'll just be sacrificing your permanence. <laughs> oh, we'll be made one! Okay there, pal. I'm going to have to get you to dial it back a notch or two. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I mean, we're all Phyrexia now. And I get it. I get it. I was extremely annoying after I came out. Wheeler, it's hard not to get excited about the best four mana black pip card of all time. Oh yeah, real tough competition, bud. You got two liches and a bad time walk. At least Phyrexian Vindicator looks at Dawn Elemental and says, take a hike. This card is huge, has at least flying, so there's barely any chance of blocking, and there's no way they're ever going to kill it through any kind of damage. I mean, sure... Obliterator makes it a bit tough, but have you ever heard of Go for the Throat? Look, buddy, I get it. You had a big life experience, and you saw something you could cast off your Dark Ritual. I know how that feels. You can cast this off basic planes. I mean, that means the world to me. Weirdly, you letting me know that my love for Dark Ritual is similar and equivalent to your love for basic planes feels great. That yeah, I'll take it. I'll take the compliment. Sorry I was so glorious earlier. I, I'm just really excited to get to the end of the episode without being killed. Or you could reframe that and say that you're ending an episode where Wheeler and I have also been killed. Anyhow, we're all Phyrexians now. This has been Punt Counter Punt. Okay, so these new Phyrexian bodies. Uh, do we have some superpowers or how does this work? Oh, no. You do get a lot more teeth, though. Way too much teeth. I go to Elish Norn and I say, hey, do you think we can get a vending machine in the break room? And she gives me more teeth. Some of these aren't even my teeth. And I got teeth in my stomach. Don't tell me which stomach they're in. I don't know. I have to guess. I feel like all I do every day is think about my teeth and talk about my teeth.
I can feel my teeth yelling at me. Does that make sense? Not in a metaphorical way, but in an actual small screeching entity way. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. My joints do that all the time now. I mean, they kind of did it before, but like you said, in the metaphorical way, and now I've got like so many more. Why did I have all these joints put in my hair? My hair didn't behave before. And now it's just got a mind of its own and it says ow all the time. It sucks. I mean, glory to Phyrexia. Oh, yeah. Glory to Phyrexia, if anyone's listening. 